Thank you, David. Now you know I can't hold a job or even a portfolio. Um, it's my tremendous pleasure to introduce uh, Grand Chief Edward John and to give you some information and I hope some insight into a man who I both value as a friend and as a national leader. Now I asked David, should I, should I give the bio overview? And he said, no, 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 talk from a more personal point of view. And now I realize how set up I've been in agreeing to do that. But uh, I think we do know the regular biographical details of Ed John. He's a hereditary chief of the Slotston Nation, uh, a lawyer, an activist, an amazing leader. His current role as North American representative on the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues is characteristic of his increasingly influential work on behalf of Indigenous peoples, a lifelong work. And whether that work has taken place in his own community or across Canada or around the world, he's someone who's made a huge difference in advancing the cause of Aboriginal peoples and First Nations in this province and around the country and around the world. But the documentary record really doesn't do him justice. It doesn't tell you, for example, what to expect should you engage Ed in a challenging negotiation. I can help with that. <laughs> having known and admired Ed for two decades and having worked with him on the same team and having confronted him as an adversary, the first thing I can tell you is this. It feels much more comfortable sitting across from Ed John at a banquet table than it does at a negotiating table. <laughs> Unfortunately, my first encounters were Ed were... With Ed, we're at tables of the latter variety, thanks to your former honoree. In 19, <laughs> thanks, Mike. In 1991, as a newly minted Aboriginal Affairs Minister, I was given responsibility to negotiate the creation of the BC Treaty Commission with the federal government and the First Nations Summit. Now, that's a pretty tough assignment for a naive young law professor thrown into the political arena with which I had very little familiarity at the time. Particularly tough if one of the people across the table is Ed John. But thanks to Ed, I must say my familiarity with that political real, re, arena developed very rapidly and sometimes very painfully. Indeed, I still have a few scars, I think, that I could show you to prove it. I won't do that. You'll be happy to know. Yet through that process, I learned to appreciate Ed's passion, his commitment, and really to respect his intelligence. There were no subjects ignored, no details overlooked when Ed was at the negotiating table. I saw those same qualities and skills at work when we were engaged in constitutional discussions preceding the, con the Charlottetown Accord and in the subsequent referendum campaign in which, thankfully, we found ourselves on the same side of the issue. And while we weren't successful, that only serves to disclose another of Ed's strengths, his commitment to doing what he believes is right, no matter how challenging or controversial it may be. You know, there's no better evidence of this than his decision in the year 2000 to accept an appointment as Minister of Children and Families in the cabinet of Premier Ujjal Dosanjh. At a time when many were in the process of stepping out of government, Ed decided to step in, and he did it for only one reason, and that was because he saw an opportunity by doing so to address the needs of the most vulnerable segments of our society. And that's the kind of guy Ed is, determined, inspired, visionary, someone who is driven by a determination to do anything and everything he can to improve the lives of Aboriginal peoples, and to improve the well-being of all peoples and of this country. That's why he labored so mightily and successfully to bring about the adoption of the Charter of Rights of Aboriginal Peoples by the UN General Assembly in 2007, and to secure Canada's support for the declaration in 2010. That's why he's been such a tireless advocate of the need to harness education to build a better future for First Nations communities. Indeed, when I was Dean of Law at the Faculty of Law at the University of Victoria, I was struggling to raise a million dollars for a professorship in Aboriginal justice and governance, and I went and talked to Ed. And Ed said, why do you stop at a million dollars? Why don't you raise another five million and create a second chair in Aboriginal economic development? Well, many of my colleagues thought it was impossible, but like so many of Ed's impossible dreams, it proved itself five years and six billion dollars, six billion, who would have been nice, six million dollars later when we succeeded in funding both positions, very much due to Ed's support and counsel. Yet for all his determination and passion, Ed is also a person who never loses sight of the human dimensions of a relationship. And that's something I've always appreciated about him. No matter how divisive were the issues, how difficult were our roles, Ed would always take time to check in and see how one was doing 
to share his own experiences and to offer insights, advice, and encouragement in a very personal way. And I especially recall an occasion when Ed became aware of some challenges I was confronting in my life. And he took the time to send me a note with a very simple message, the essence of which was, the most difficult journey you can take is from your head to your heart. And while that message was directed at me, it strikes me that it really very much characterizes Ed, a man who has made that journey every day and whose intellect and emotions are well-connected and represented in everything he does. So thank you, Ed, for all that you've accomplished on behalf of Aboriginal peoples, on behalf of this province, on behalf of this country. It's my privilege to commend you as a person richly deserving of the honor bestowed upon you tonight, and my even greater privilege to count you as a friend. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming and honoring Grand Chief Edward John. <laughs> 